Hello, my name is Jenna. I'm a public health nurse at Southwestern Public Health, specializing in school health. Kindergarten is such a critical time in your child's life filled with growth and development opportunities. Today, I'm pleased to introduce you to Jade Rogers, an occupational therapist, who's here to share her top tips on social emotional development for your child. Welcome, Jade. Hi, Jenna. Thank you so much for having me. Can we start by talking about some of the social emotional milestones um, that typical preschool age, you know, age three and four year old children would have um, as they're getting ready for kindergarten? Sure. So social emotional skills are really the soft skills that are required to get through life. So they're really the most important thing that we can um, help promote in our children, especially in the kindergarten years, because they're key kind of time of growth and development. So there's five main pillars of social emotional skills. There's self-awareness. So it's kind of understanding your own emotions, your thoughts, your values, what's important to you. Self-management, so being able to understand those emotions, but also apply that understanding to um, your own behavior, your thoughts, all of those things. So you're managing the self a little bit more than maybe a toddler is. There's social awareness, so it's the ability to understand others and their perspectives and kind of develop that sense of empathy. There's relationship skills. So again, it's going along with all of those kind of key pillars we've talked about where you're able to use these things to establish and maintain healthy relationships with others. And finally, it's responsible decision-making. So being able to make caring and constructive choices um, about your own personal behavior and your interactions with others. And we're seeing a lot of development in kindergartners at that age. So how can parents promote their child's development uh, on the way to kindergarten? Yeah, so as I said at the beginning, I really feel like we need to kind of step aside and let them play. Um, we know that children will work on these skills when they have trusted relationships with others. So um, the most important thing is really to allow plenty of time for long periods of play with trusted play partners. So it's one thing to go to the park and just let them play, but it's different when you meet with cousins, family, you know, close family, friends, and just give them a lot of long play periods. We want to step back and let them work out problems, resolve conflict, and doing these things organically and giving each other feedback because that's more meaningful really than our adult directions. But there are times where you'll want to step in and support them. So this might look like asking open-ended questions, um, like, what do you think would make you guys feel better? Or saying something like, what rules might help this game go better? And letting them develop their own rules. So doing these little stepping stones can foster that um, skill development instead of taking it over. So then you are now making the rules and they're not developing them on their own. Um, they will develop these um, social emotional skills through things like pretend play, free exploration of the environment, um, constructive play, which is any kind of building and creating type play, and then games with rules. When you add the natural outdoor environment, that's where you get that really deep extended periods of play. So children will have more complex play and more challenging play. And then also when they're playing outdoors in all weathers, it's promoting resiliency and just sort of a sense of positivity. So outdoor play is really key to um, these SEL, what we call SEL skills, but also playing together. So playing with your kids, following their lead outdoors, playing games like board games that require following rules um, and taking turns and those kind of skills. Reading and singing together are huge. So of course, we're always going to promote reading books with your children, but choose some books about emotions or mindfulness because identifying and labeling emotions and then pointing them out in others. So even in the community, you could say, oh, ooh, that person looks upset about something and talk about it with your kids. These kinds of interactions with your children will promote these types of skill development as well. You could even use puppets to act out emotions or um, problem solving scenarios and model those skills, of course, yourself. So modeling um, empathy, kindness, so doing something together for others, um, 
and really just making sure that you're modeling these problem solving skills together instead of taking over and doing it for your children. And then finally, developing routines and rituals at home that will foster a sense of connection because children really need connection to their family, to friends and peers, and to their community in order to have this um, sort of more well-roundedness to them. So having routines before school, after school, Friday night routines, um, your bedtime routine where you read a story together, these are all sort of special times that will help foster this, um, the social emotional skills. And one thing I do want to point out is that children need to be um, developing these skills in relation to people of all backgrounds, cultures, ethnicities. That is also part of being well-rounded. So we should expose children to books and experiences that include people um, of a diverse background. Um, can you tell us a little bit about when a parent uh, should seek out help from an occupational therapist and perhaps what um, a session may look like for um, a child or a family? Sure. So occupational therapy is a bit of a mystery to many people, so I'm happy to answer this question. We really support people to do all the things that they want to do and need to do in the day. So we're pretty open-ended. For children, this might look like challenges at home. So things like dressing, toileting, sleeping, chores, um, problems at school. <clears throat> so difficulty with printing, focus, um, challenging behaviors at school or sensory issues, or even during play. So social skills or fine and gross motor skills. We can support children with any of these difficulties. Well, thank you so much, Jade, for this incredibly insightful discussion today on social emotional learning and for some of the tips and key messages uh, for parents. Um, if you are a parent or a caregiver and you have questions or concerns about your child's development, you can contact us at Public Health or reach out to your healthcare provider. Thanks for watching.